Due to the ever-present reruns of the 60s Batman television show playing on British TV during the early 80s, the Batman that I grew up with was Adam West. And when it came to Batman toys, I had the Mego 8-inch Batman and Robin figures and the Mego Batmobile, but sadly I never owned any of the villain characters in my childhood. As a collector today, I have assembled quite the collection of Mego superhero characters. And while these figures do have a simple charm that I adore, they are far from screen or comic accurate. And I've always wanted to add some Batman figures to my collection that are accurate to the 1966 Batman TV show. Unfortunately for me though, I missed the Batboat on the Mattel releases from a few years ago. So when I stumbled across these new McFarlane versions on a recent trip to Perth, I picked them up. But when I got them home and opened them, I was somewhat baffled. Are these toys for children? Or are they adult collectibles? Either way wouldn't really matter to me since I collect both. But the problem here is, I don't know what they are. It's like McFarlane were trying to appeal to both audiences and failed on all fronts. So let's try and figure out what went wrong. Stay tuned. Come with me, toy fans. This video is proudly brought to you by Valiverse, the creative company behind the most exciting new action figure range available on the market today, Action Force. Make sure you visit the Valiverse.com website to purchase your amazing Action Force comics, toys, and other products. And follow Valiverse on YouTube, Instagram, and Facebook to keep up to date with the latest product news. All the links are in the description below. Shop Valiverse, because it's time for action. Hey toy fans, my name is Tony, and welcome back to the Analog Toys YouTube channel. In the 1970s and 80s, toys were toys, and they were designed for children. It was that simple. However, fast forward to the present day, and most toy aisles carry a selection of action figures made for kids, as well as many action figure lines that are squarely aimed at the adult collector. Well, that's if you can actually find the product in stores. But let's try and establish the difference between the two in the context of this video. Essentially, all action figures are toys, but what I'm really trying to identify here is who they are made for. Who is the target audience? In my eyes, factors such as higher price points Greater detail, superior articulation, easily lost small accessories, and accuracy over durability are all indicators that the action figure has been designed with the adult collector in mind. Even though Hasbro products are designed for ages 4 and up, and they use the marketing slogan for fans of all ages, you need to be aware that this is a contractual requirement when making toys licensed by corporations like Disney. And when the same manufacturer is using the HasLab Kickstarter model to sell a huge Star Wars Rancor toy that you need to pay for up front and wait around 18 months before you get it in hand, it makes no sense to suggest that the Star Wars Black Series range was created for children. In basic terms, I think that these are made for children and these are made for the adult collector. Just my opinion. But I'm sure you're asking by this point in the video, why does it even matter? Well, when a company is creating a toy or action figure, or any product for that matter. They need to understand who their customer is and what it is they want in a product. If these factors are ignored or misunderstood, the product is highly likely to fail at retail. Admittedly, some action figure lines have successfully mastered the art of appealing to both children and adults, with Mattel's Motu Origins line being the best current example of that. However, these cases are few and far between. Now with McFarlane's new Batman 66 range, the creator has made such strange choices that the toys are unlikely to appeal to children, while being almost guaranteed to disappoint the adult collector. And let's try and explore why. This collection includes three different six inch tall action figures, featuring the Adam West Batman, Burt Ward's Robin, and Cesar Romero's Joker, along with a Batmobile toy vehicle and a Batcave playset. First off, let's take a closer look at the action figures. All three figures are relatively accurate to the screen versions of the characters. The costume colours are all correct, and the painted detail on the faces is quite impressive. However, the soft goods capes on Batman and Robin are very chintzy, and I really don't like the way the capes drape over their shoulders. If you can ignore the chintzy capes, these are otherwise pretty nice looking figures. But it's a different story when it comes to the articulation. The heads are on ball joints and they turn left and right with ease, but there is very little up and down movement which hinders the posability options. We have articulation at the shoulders, elbows, forearms, along with wrist articulation. There is a rotating joint at the waist, but this is very tight and difficult to maneuver. And alas, no ab crunch. 
But what really lets these figures down is the leg articulation, because all we have here are rotating hips and bendable knees. And this makes it impossible to pose Batman in any kind of action stance without the use of a figure stand, which is not included here. And even then, the posability is still limited. And adult collectors like to be able to pose their action figures. Put these same figures in the hands of a child and the paint applications won't hold up to much play wear. And I fear the fingers are so fragile they would easily break off the hands if a child tried to place an accessory in their grip. This Batman has almost lost his index finger already and all he did was try to grip the Batmobile steering wheel. But fear not, because these figures don't come with any useful accessories like bat shark repellent, batarangs or bombs. Instead, each figure comes packed in with two action word bubbles in the pow and bam style of the classic TV show. These accessories can be clipped onto the figure's wrist, but in order to place the figures in a fighting pose that looks anywhere near half decent, you need the type of superior leg articulation that is sorely missing on these figures. Instead, you have to stand the figures in dumb poses like this. Overall, these action figures are not durable enough for a child's play and collectors will be disappointed by the lack of quality and articulation. The Batmobile, on the other hand, looks the part, but is really cheaply made, retailing for around 30 US dollars, which is a very reasonable price for a toy vehicle in today's market. This budget Batmobile is missing a lot of important details, the kind of details that adult collectors look for in products, such as opening doors, and this version doesn't even have the lines of the door molded into the body. Even the Mego version from the 70s got that right, the front wheels cannot steer, the bat symbol on the hubcaps is missing their signature red paint job, and the exhaust pipes have been manufactured from a soft grey plastic, when they really needed a metallic finish. The worst sin though is the fact that this Batmobile is horridly under scale. It is a real squeeze to even get Batman into the driver's seat, and once there, the Batmobile looks ridiculous with Batman's head protruding above the windshield. Of all the different products in this range, the Batmobile is the only one that's really suitable for child's play, and it's priced accordingly. The Batmobile here is a toy. It's a shame I can't say the same thing for the Batcave playset. First of all, this is a diorama, not a playset. It has no play features to speak of, and is so cheaply made that the first time I took it out of the box, I thought I'd accidentally picked up a bootleg. While some areas of this diorama do look the part, other aspects such as the cheap hollow computers and the cardboard disc to park the Batmobile on are almost insulting. But the worst part of this diorama is the bat poles. They seem like a complete afterthought and are so cut price in design and construction that they are literally pitiful. You could swap them out with uncooked spaghetti noodles and you'd barely notice a difference. McFarlane's Batcave playset is so fragile that it wouldn't last five minutes in a child's hand, but is also so cheaply made that most collectors would be embarrassed to actually have it in their collection. As a matter of fact, I don't even really want any of this stuff anymore, and I'd happily give it away to a patron, but I doubt any of them want it either. Despite the points I've made in this video, some people will still debate whether lines like McFarlane's Batman 66 collection are actually aimed at adults. These same people also like to challenge my opinion. Oh, hey, another opinion! Especially when I'm critical of a line they like because that is when they start making wild claims such as THESE AREN'T MADE FOR YOU! Now since I've never seen any evidence to prove this ridiculous argument, it is my opinion that figure lines such as G.I. Joe Classifieds, Star Wars Black Series and Marvel Legends are designed for adults. But with these McFarlane offerings, it's anyone's guess. Now why am I emphasising the fact that this is just my opinion, the opinion of the consumer? Because there's a self-proclaimed toy expert on YouTube who's accused me of disguising my opinion as fact, which is something I've never actually done. But we have to try to strain out the, the people that are giving their opinions as facts because it's only going to rise the frustration level. So watch out for those type of videos. They're not healthy for us. But remember, this self-proclaimed toy expert also said this. The adult collector is nothing to toy companies, okay? It, they're less than 1%. Now, if that isn't an opinion disguised as a fact that is hidden behind a pathetic appeal to authority, then I'll eat my own hat. So he's an idiot. Well, he did also say this. The problem with that is that a certain amount of the population already owns the character. And every time that we reissued something, 
we wound up getting stuck with a lot of it. So that's the reason you can't reissue figures. So why is it that we keep getting so many re-releases? So I want to explain why the first tier cannot be something like that, like a fully tooled figure that a lot of people were expecting or hoping for or counting on. It's just how accounting works and how companies do business. What the fuck are you talking about? It's called cognitive dissonance. What the fuck is this? While the USS flag makes a great floaty in a pool, it actually was never really intended to be purchased. Oh, Maybe. another opinion. He's an idiot. Uh-huh. And the only thing he loves more than chasing other people's content is telling them why they're wrong. Everything you just said is wrong. He did this to retroblasting no less than three times before Michael French had justifiably had enough and made an epic video calling out this self-proclaimed toy expert's bullshit. This back and forth resulted in a poorly hosted online debate where the moderator would not allow Michael French to establish the difference between a fact and an opinion. We have to establish what a fact is versus an opinion, Jay, because otherwise he's going to keep saying that his opinions about how great corporate things are, like getting IVs into people's bank accounts, are facts when that's an opinion. Bingo! Effectively rendering the entire debate pointless since any wild claim made by the self-proclaimed toy expert it, they're less than one percent didn't need to be proven bingo in fact he presented no facts whatsoever it was just a case of trust me i used to be somebody i am a lifelong toy collector but i've also worked in the toy industry that's kind of the difference one thing that did happen after the debate though was that he seemingly stopped chasing retro blasting's content and started chasing mine instead it's not like it it just plateaued with with customers. They lost 300 customers, 300 backers. Almost. Almost. That's bad. That's really yeah. bad. Behind the scenes, nobody's panicking. You know, it either works or it doesn't. And if it doesn't, they'll move on to something else. If it did work, great, they'll ship it. And awesome. It's not something that anyone is losing sleep over. <laughs> I, I have it already, so great unlock, great unlock. That's why the later tiers tend to unlock tooling, and the first tier does not. Both the Sentinel and Galactus have newly tooled products as their first unlock, dipshit. But please, tell us again how your years of toy industry experience prove that everything you say is a fact. I am a lifelong toy collector, but I've also worked in the toy industry, that's kind of the difference. So, dear viewer, expect another video from the Purple Nurple in the next few days, where he tries to save us from ourselves by explaining why these McFarlane Batman toys aren't made for kids, or adults, or whatever, because of toy accounting or some other nonsense. You know, it's, it's like a Venn diagram, right? Where, you know... So here's her MOQ diagram. Oh, does that show up? Those are the pictures? Those are balls. At the end of the day, any action figure product will succeed at retail if it appeals to its target audience. And I don't need to use some claim of 20 years in the toy industry to prove my point. It's common sense. And common sense tells me that these so-called toys are totally unsuitable for children. Well, except for the Batmobile. And that collectors have been dealt a really dodgy hand. So thank you all for watching, and if you enjoyed this video, you can click the links up here to check out some of our other Batman content. Or click down here to subscribe to the channel, or support us on Patreon. You'll find a link in the description below. I'm Tony from Analog Toys, and I'll see you in the next video.